I'm headed down the road to go get some uh, feed racks, you know, to put over in the corner. Well, went to Mama's hooked up to this trailer, and I got, I don't know, a quarter mile down the road, and I realized that the, it felt really heavy. I look back, it's all this uh, wheel not spinning. Well, let me show you what we did. Uh, I think I might have flat spotted it just a wee bit in here. What do you think? You ever seen down in a tire with it still on the wheel? Yep, there you go. All right. We're going to pull that off. And then we're going to keep on going down the road. Go get me some speed racks. Um, I also know, by the way, this is my dandy, handy, dandy assistant's brother. Uh, he just got out of the Marines. Matter of fact, just come back home two days ago. He's going to be called our handy, dandy, handy, dandy assistant. You'll probably see him from time to time on the channel. My handy dandy handy dandy assistant just pointed out a good thing. Uh, if you sit it on the flat spot, it won't roll away. So there you go. Well, we got the wheel off. And, well, we're not dragging the ground with the tire anymore. So I think we've made some progress. Let's get in the truck and go get us some speed wrecks. My handy dandy handy dandy assistant is my shifter transmission control module is what he is. Y'all watch. Left one down, please. Middle one up, please. Left one up, please. And there you have it. Well, I ended up borrowing my handy dandy assistant's trailer because that one there, well, <laughs> it's a little too iffy. It needs some work. Well, let's just look at this tire once again because I'm just amazed at this right here. Look how flat it is. Yes, sir. I worked at a shop, tire shop when I was a kid, a couple years, and <laughs> I never saw nothing like that. That's that's pretty, that's an accomplishment, I think. That's pretty amazing. I might have to hang that up on the wall <laughs> or something. Anyway, uh, I only got one rack. They're 16 feet tall. You know, I said I was going to go like 12 foot high. Well, I got to thinking... I ain't got no way to get to the top. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut them in half. And uh, I'm only going to put one rack up right now because I've only got enough beams for one. I want them two foot apart. And they want $40 a piece for those. And, well, I'm not giving that. Well, this is brand new stuff. And that's probably why they want 40 for that. I found them on Facebook for $15, 20 a piece. So I will probably buy some of them eventually. But for now, one rack will do. Because these are four feet wide. I was only planning on like... 30 36 inches so we can store a lot on these because they're so wide anyway i'm not gonna work on them today next week we got to start on because i can't have this taking up my floor space no sir uh, maybe monday i don't we'll just have to see anyway uh i'm glad to get them maybe we can get that corner cleaned up all right here's what we're gonna do i think i told y'all the other day i don't remember we're cutting them in half they're 16 foot long they're too tall uh we're gonna cut them at eight feet and I'm just going to put up one section for now because that's that's all the uh, beams I've got. You know, I want them two foot apart, I think. I might change my mind when I get it up. But anyway, let's cut these in half and get at least four beams up, two on top, two on the bottom. And then we're going to have to move all that junk so we can get this over there where it goes. And then I won't be able to put nothing on it today because I don't have any of the, the wire decking fella i got these from he didn't have any and let me tell you i've spent two hours on facebook marketplace trying to find some wire decking that'll fit a 48 inch wide deep rack well ain't none what i would call local i'm gonna have to travel two hours one way tomorrow to get my wire deck so tomorrow maybe uh, after i spend half the day driving <laughs> we can get all that stuff put on the rack but right now let's get this thing cut in half
ain't got the room for that to be in here. So she's going outside. Oh yeah. in here again now what we got to do is got to make room all this stuff's got to go somewhere for now that cabinet has got to be moved it's going this way i'm gonna leave i don't know a couple of feet from it to the wall so i can get on both sides of it because you know four feet wide it's that's kind of wide uh anyway let me let me get some of this out of the way i'm dreading this i really am I think I got enough moved out of the way. It's only coming to approximately right here. It ain't eight foot long. Uh, I just scooted it out of the way just enough to get a rack in here. I'm tired of moving this stuff. You know, I got to thinking, I brought all this stuff in to the shop. Then I had to move it out of the way so we could do the tin and insulation. Well, then I put it back after we got done. Well, now I'm moving it out of the way again. Then I got to put it on the rack once we get done. I'm tired of moving this stuff. So hopefully this will be the last time we have to move it. Um, I got to look at two. <laughs> All this junk right here. It's got to go on that rack. I'm afraid we've already got it filled up. Yes, sir. Uh, all this stuff here is car except for transmission. But yes, sir, every bit of this has got to go on that rack. Uh, tomorrow, when I go get my, uh, what do you call them, the decking, uh, if he's got any uh, beams and they're cheap, I may go ahead and get eight of them. And we might just go ahead and put that other rack up. That'll be 16 feet long. It'll be about right here. Be two foot off the wall. We don't ever do anything over here anyway, so, you know, it won't be in our way. And we'll have plenty of storage then. That may be what I do. Right now, though, let me get to the beams. Get two on the bottom. I'll get that other end piece, get it hooked up, and then we'll just keep on trucking up. All right, let's get this first one in. Well, I guess I probably ought to measure, huh? Two feet is just up is what I'm going. So that's right, cheer. All right, let's get this thought of a gun in there. <laughs> Where are we going? Now, that may not be good enough right there. No. I'm wanting to roll my motors under it. And they are approximately, I'm going to say 20 inches. It may not be enough. I might have to go up one or two notches. That is, well, it's right at 20. i tell you what. Let's go up one notch just to make sure. All right, 
what does that give me? About 21 and a half. I think that's where we'll leave it. I believe we can get motors under there. Let me get this other end on real quick. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Scoot it down a little more. Let's do three foot. Let's see what that looks like. Here's three feetages off the wall. I think that'll be just fine and dandily. Like I said, these are four feet wide. And if I shove this against the wall, and I got some heavy parts here, well, I just I'll have to move stuff here to get these. I just think it'll be just fine and dandily to leave it like this right here. Um, like I said. You know, we're putting racks where we had parts, so it's not like we're taking up some more space. Yeah, we'll be all right. Let me put the rest of my beams up real quick. like much once you get it up <laughs> sure don't but like i said it's it's four feet wide so i think it'll it'll hold more than than i'm thinking but i do believe we'll probably fill it half full anyway um i reckon tomorrow i'm gonna spend literally half the day driving I'm going to get my wire decking and i'm also thinking well you see all these little small parts that the the wire mesh it's like a I want to say a four by four square. A lot of this stuff's just going to fall through it. So what I'm thinking about doing, stopping my Lowe's on the way back home, getting me four sheets of half inch plywood and uh, putting that down on top of the wire mesh. That way stuff won't fall through. We can uh, put a lot of small parts up there. I think that's what I'll do. Yes, sir. So I will see y'all tomorrow when I got my wire digging. Headed down the road. It's, well, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I had to go help my handy dandy handy dandy assistant move some furniture that's the nephew marine that just moved home had a, they got him apartments so i had to help him move some furniture well look here this is I think this pretty right here anyway i'm headed to go get the wire uh, decking for my racks i'm about halfway there uh we'll be there in a little while it's only about an hour and a half not two hours google they lied to me. They do that sometimes. Anyway, we'll be there in a little while, get loaded up, and then we'll head back to the house. I know a lot of y'all like to see the scenery here in Tennessee. Well, I'm up in Kentucky today. It ain't quite as pretty as Tennessee, but it's it's close. It's at least still in the south. So here's your little bit of Kentucky landscape to look at.
the way back home, probably eh, not quite halfway there, I decided to take a detour. We're going through what is called Lampoon the Lakes. Let me tell you, we are way off, way off in the boonies. <laughs> yes, sir. Hope we don't break down here. No, sir, sure don't. Just crossed back into Tennessee. Matter of fact, that sign right there, barely see it. That's the state line sign. This is a little roadside picnic area, I guess you call it. Y'all look at this right here. It's just absolutely gorgeous right here. Man alive. Imagine if you could live in a place like this. Just look at it. Wow. That little detour added probably 30, 45 minutes to the drive home, but you know what? It was worth every minute of it. Yes, sir. I forgot how pretty it is around here. I might have to take that drive a little more often. Uh, we are home. I got 16 of them, by the way, to do two racks. Uh, let me unload some of them out here, eight of them out here. Rest of them need to go in the shop. Then, gotta jump in the truck, go to Lowe's, get some plywood. Maybe when I get back, we get the racks done and get all this stuff up off the floor. Well, it's a few hours later. Uh, Mama called, said she had some chicken enchilada. And I, it's hard for y'all to tell, I'm sure. You can't tell, but I like food. I like eating. I like it a lot. <laughs> and you just don't turn down Mama's cooking. So went over and ate that. That took up a little time. And then now my belly's so full, it's about to explode. But we got to get this done. Let me get them unloaded over here. And then I got to get my plywood in here. I think I got to cut a little bit off the end of it. And then we'll go to getting this floor cleaned up. There's one. times. Well, it's the next day. Y'all wore me out doing all this. It hurt my knee pretty bad for some reason. So I went in the house and rested it the rest of the night. Uh, I spent the last couple hours doing all this right cheer. Got everything on the shelf. I got bigger equipment organized over here. Well, let me just show you what I got. This table here, it has become a staging area for parts for the 40, and that's fine. I need somewhere to put them. But uh, I just got my bigger equipment lined up right here. This motor, you know, I'm gonna put my motors under here. Well, 
you remember that's not my motor. Uh, well, let me just tell you about it. You know, I didn't tell y'all what it fit because I thought I might acquire the car. Well, it looks like I'm probably not because we couldn't we couldn't get close on the price. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it on that on that crate cart thing, whatever. Uh, there's the old 283 coming out of the 40. Let me tell you that. Yeah, that hurt me bad. Hurt my knee. Uh, I need to get some dollies to put my motors on because I got, I just counted them up a while ago. I got seven or eight motors and blocks that we got to get over here stored. So, yeah, I'm going to get some dollies or make some or something. Anyway, this is, I got it sort of organized. Not really, but I know it don't look like it. Look at all that. Over here is square body stuff. Then it starts here in just general Chevrolet stuff. Of course, you can see my heads. I got about probably twice that many in storage, which I completely forgot about storage. It'll finish up the rack most likely. Um, but got a bunch of heads over there. Then we come up here and transmissions, three speed. There's old Saginaw come out of the 40. There's a Super T10 back there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy an input shaft for it and we'll get that put together and we'll have a transmission ready for something else. Uh, superchargers, let me show you something here in just a minute. So that's where my supercharger section is. Got carburetors here. This, that's uh, stuff that y'all have sent me that we'll probably use fairly soon. So I thought, I, well, let's just put it over uh, with itself. Mine is just turbo. That y'all didn't send me that. I've had that for a while. Uh, carburetors, I got. Well, there's the old Carter Ford jet that come off the 40, the 283 down there. Two Ford, two barrels. There's two quadra jets in there. What else? Uh, just miscellaneous knick-knack bullcrap up there. And the shell, I mean the cabinet that was here, well it's here. Let me tell you, that is about to fall apart. <laughs> it's probably going to get thrown away because I got a, a gray cabinet, probably about that size, a little taller, in the garage. We got to get over here eventually. So that now I'm probably going to throw it away. Uh, what else? This. This fella here. This lawnmower over here. And this, but that one and that one, they're going to go in the garage. It's just, it's taking up too much room. They got to get out of here. The fridge, that's mama's old refrigerator. Well, I say old, it's seven or eight years old, maybe. Well, it started leaking free on, I don't know, a year or so ago. So I've been having to charge it up every couple of months. And we just said, fooey on it. Let's go buy her a new one. I'm going to put some stop leak in that one. If it fixes it, yay. If it don't, it's going to landfill. Uh, but I want it out of here into my house before too long. Anyway, once we get all this here, and it's really bothering me that it's in here, once we get that out of here, we'll have a, a big bay again, bring another vehicle in here to work on it. You know, if uh, I have to work on one of my old pile of junks that I actually drive. 40 parts, they're still strode here. Probably gonna move them over here for now just to get them away from the car because, you know, we gotta work on that. I almost forgot I was gonna show y'all something about a supercharger. Um, trying to think when y'all are going to see this video. I guess a week ago, on the weekend I posted on Facebook that I was riding around the hills of Tennessee buying parts. Uh, well, this is what I got. By the way, um, y'all need to go join the Facebook page. I post stuff there from time to time, just, you know, updating your own stuff. Go join the Facebook page. Um, anyway, this is what I bought. Let me show you. Oh yeah, look at there. This is a Wind 177 supercharger. There it is, brand and spankingly new. Yes, it is, look at the intake right there. This is one size up from uh, the 142 we put on Dude. Um, I saw this on the Facebook Marketplace. And well, Wind don't make these anymore. And the used ones like we put on Dude, well, they wanted what this guy wanted for a brand spankingly new and I was like, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that. I don't even know what we're gonna put it on. I probably don't even own the vehicle that we're gonna put it on, but we've got it. Yes, sir, I'm gonna put her up on the shelf. When it comes time to put it on, guess what? We got it, oh yeah. I'm very happy to get that done. Um, we're a little more organized, not a lot, but at least we got somewhere to put our parts now. We'll get that other rack up eventually when we need it. We may end up putting it in a garage over here. I don't know. Uh, I need to buy some beams. I'll find when I find some cheap ones. I'll go ahead and buy them. Then when I get the garage uh, cleaned up, we may just put it over there. 
I do believe though, a feller could build him a thousand by a thousand foot shop. And he'll fill it up in a couple of years. <laughs> I don't think you can build one big enough. No, sir, I don't. Anyway, glad to get this done. I will tell you this, scooting that motor around and that other one, it's, it's tore my knee up. I'm gonna go in the house, take some ibuprofen, rest my knee a little bit, and then we're gonna come out here this evening, work on this old car a little bit. Appreciate y'all watching.